Imagine you're building yourself a house. You probably need a couple things in order to start. For example, you might need some bricks to build your walls, some glass for your windows, some shingles for your roof, and maybe even some plants for your garden outside. Now, imagine that this building isn't going to be built on Earth, but instead, it's going to be built on Mars. Well, the kit of parts that you assembled earlier probably isn't going to work anymore because it won't fit in that tiny rocket that it takes to get you up there. So, with such a limited amount of startup material, how can we fathom building anything on Mars? Well, when I set out to answer this question, I began to wonder, why do we construct with such traditional methods, brick by brick, when instead, perhaps, we could use nature's method? Take, for example, the silkworm. The silkworm is able to spin highly sophisticated 3D cocoon structures out of a protein fiber that it creates itself. It is, in essence, the world's tiniest 3D printer. Therefore, my research looks into how an additive manufacturing technique, like 3D printing, can be paired alongside a bio-inspired material design in order to form a new kind of grown architecture on Mars. Think about if we could use 3D printers to print a scaffold on Mars that can hold specifically engineered bacteria who, over time, could calcify into a hardened rock shell or a dome. I'm cataloging a matrix of building materials both being used in architecture today and being studied and seeing if a bio-inspired material approach could help optimize their construction and enhance their build build buildability. So why is this important? Why does this matter? Well, besides the fact that it would be incredibly interesting to go to the surface of Mars and study it for ourselves, I think there's a greater lesson here. And that lesson is in sustainable design practices. We currently expend massive, massive amounts of energy assembling, transporting, manufacturing, and producing our materials, when instead, maybe this kind of grown and in situ architecture could help mitigate these costs altogether. Think about how much we have to heat a clay, a clay brick in order to make it into a solid and then transport it to another location and then construct our house there. So the final form of my thesis Yes, it might look like a design proposal, but I think also it works as a piece of science fiction. And much like our science fiction, I believe it has the power to inspire a new visualization of what our future buildings on Mars might look like, but at the same time can, spot, uh, can spark a conversation on sustainable design practices here on Earth today. Thank you. <laughs>